Hello, my name's Emily and I've been working for the last nine months at the Royal Botanic Gardens Kew as part of my undergraduate degree at the University of Manchester. And I've been looking at orchid and mycorrhizal symbiosis in terms of germination. So orchid seeds are very small, they're only a few micrometres long and do not contain any endosperm. So they have no carbon source with which to germinate. Therefore, they require a mycorrhizal fungus in order to provide carbon, water and minerals in returns for the products of photosynthesis once the plant is established. So I've been looking at this symbiotic relationship between seven fungal isolates isolated from the man orchid and three British, German, uh, British orchid species. So just firstly, a little bit about orchid seed germination. This is unique within the angiosperms and is split into a series of stages. At stage naught, the embryo is present within the tester, but no uptake of water or uh, germination has begun. At stage one, the, seed, the embryo takes up water and swells to fill the seed coat. By stage two, some cell division has taken place and the embryo has now broken the seed coat. This is what we define as initial germination. At stage three, the, um, the embryo has broken completely out of the seed coat and um, forms a mass of undifferentiated cells called a protocol, uh, which at stage four then produces rhizoids, which are small hair, uh, root hair-like projections used for the uptake of water. At stage five, the initial shoot and root structures are produced, and um, this is when the plant is considered mature. So these are the species that we looked at. Firstly, we have Orchis anthropophora, or the man orchid. This is in decline in the UK due to ploughing, scrub encroachment and herbicide drift, and is currently IUCN red listed. Uh, next, we have Dacloriza protomissa. This is common throughout the UK and Europe. It's found in dune slacks, calcareous meadows and woodland, um, and it commonly forms many hybrids with different Dacloriza species. Uh, the final species is also a Dacloriza, Dacloriza fuchsii. This is a very similar distribution to Dacloriza protomissa, again in woodland and grassland, and is uh, very common throughout the UK. So traditionally, um, orchids are germinated asymbiotically using a nutrient-rich medium containing sugar and minerals to simulate the presence of the fungus. However, this isn't very helpful when you're looking at the interaction between orchids and mycorrhizal fungus. And pl these plants produced this way are not suitable for reintroduction work. Therefore, you need a mycorrhizal fungus to um, produce these plants. So all the fungi, like I said, were isolated from adult roots of the man orchid and were placed with the seeds onto an oats agar medium. The oats within the agar provide cellulose and starch which um, are broken down into sugars by the mycorrhizal fungus and then delivered into the orchid for germination. Uh, so every five weeks I recorded the stage that each seed had reached um, during their germination. So in uh, Orchis anthropophora, we found that uh, of the seven isolates, only three produced sta seedling stage plants. Uh, so germination to stages two, three or four doesn't necessarily mean that the plant is going to reach that full germination stage five and produce an adult plant. Uh, so we suggest that these fungi may actually have other roles within the adult plant, but we're not, we don't know what, what roles they have. Uh, these seedlings are now being grown up into a larger plants for reintroduction studies. Uh, in terms of the two Dactylorhiza species, these two species are very closely related. They're only separated by a polyploidy event, and they have, we found that they associate to, with two isolates to produce seedling stage plants. Uh, the other isolates will not produce seedling stage plants. Uh, this may suggest that the orchid mycorrhizal uh, symbiosis is very conserved within Dactylorhiza, but we'd like to do more studies with more species of that genus to confirm this. So to confirm the fungal colonisation, we carried out hand sectioning and staining with tolidine blue. Um, the, you can see here we have uh, fungal pelotons. So these are tightly wound hyphae structures, which are the site of nutrient exchange. 
Therefore, that confirms that the fungal symbiosis is taking place and that the fungus has had a role in the germination to the seedling stage. Uh, interestingly, you can also see when the primary root structure is being produced that it's quickly colonised by the mycorrhizal fungus. So this may suggest that it's a continuing relationship. It doesn't just stop when the plant is, uh, becomes a seedling. Um, so in conclusion, this is a complex symbiosis. Uh, the fungi found in adult plants may not be suitable to germinate um, plants up to, uh, up to a seedling stage, but they may have other roles, other interesting things that, you could, that, that we haven't discovered yet. Um, the underlying mechanism of this symbiosis could be epigenetic, biochemical or genetic based. That's something I'd really like to look further into, it's not very well understood. But this is a novel method which could be applied to rarer orchids, such as Epipatchus or Ophrys, um, to conserve them, uh, uh, work more for reintroduction studies and look at this unique symbiosis further. So I would just like to thank uh, everyone at Q for all their support and um, if you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. <laughs>